the fruit of good action is said to be of the nature of sattva goodness and pure, while the fruit of rajas, passion, is pain, and the fruit of tamas, stoneness, is ignorance. Those who chant the verses of the Gita loudly in this birth certainly get a human body in the next birth. Everybody wishes to become a human being in the next birth. Shri Krishna says that those who have performed karmas in a beautiful way and has performed karmas of the mode of sattva, goodness, the fruit of this, of, of the mode of sattva, goodness, um, is goodness and purity. And the fruits of the mode of sattva, goodness mean happiness, gnan, wisdom, non-attachment, etc. All of these are fruits of the mode of sattva, goodness. If one has performed sattkarma, then they'll get the fruits of the mode of sattva, goodness. And these are pure fruits. If a person has performed karmas of the mode of rajas, passion, then the fruit of this is pain. And if a person is performing karmas of the mode of dhamma, stillness, then the fruit of this is ignorance. What are the fruits of all three of these? What are sukhritasya karma? Shankaranaji says that these are karmas that are performed with an intellect that has surrendered to God. In the third chapter, while describing karma yoga, the yoga of karma, God said that tadartam karma kunteya mukta sangha samachara. Therefore, O son of Kunti, do your work as a sacrifice, becoming free from all attachment. There, there are two words, madartam for me and tadartam for God. For karmas that have been performed tadartam for God and with an intellect that has surrendered to God, the fruits of these are the mode of sattva, goodness. And the fruits of the mode of sattva goodness include happiness and gnan wisdom. If I were to say with a lot of clarity, then I'll say that however much happy you are in this life, then consider either that you perform karmas of the mode of sattva goodness in your previous lives, or you have performed them in this life, and that you're getting the fruits of them. The mode of sattva goodness increases, or you can attain gnan wisdom. You get one of these two fruits if you perform karmas of the mode of uh, if you perform karmas of the mode of sattva goodness. And in the end, the consequence of grand wisdom is happiness anyway. The happiness of material objects is a very ordinary happiness, but the happiness that comes from grand wisdom is a happiness of a very high level. And if a person goes forward on the path of grand wisdom, then consider that the mode of sattva goodness is increasing in their lives. The fruit of karmas of the mode of rajas passion is pain. Karmas of the mode of rajas passion always give birth to pain. Madhusudan Saraswati Ji says that karmas of the mode of rajas are punya, the opposite of sin karmas, that are combined with sin. Karmas of the mode of rajas are karmas that are punya, the opposite of sin. They are good karmas, but they are combined with sin. What is the sin in them? The wish for fruits is a sin. Shankaran Ji says that karmas performed with the wish of fruits are karmas of the mode of rajas, passion. These are karmas performed with the attitude that I should get something. The fruit of such karmas is pain. Think about how many people there have been of the mode of Rajas passion. All the big kings are people of the mode of Rajas passion. All the big warriors are people of the mode of Rajas. But in the end, they got pain. Alexander the Great had gone out to win over the world and won so much that his end was very bad. Napoleon fell a lot into a lot of pain at the end of his life. He had to spend it in jail. Napoleon was in jail. He fell into a lot of pain. We have to ask the historians. They all fell into a lot of pain. These people went out to try and win over the world, yet they died in sorrow. Hitler committed suicide. Mussolini and Stalin fell into a lot of pain. One time, there were stamps with the name Stalin in the world, and Stalin was known as a man of steel. Nobody, he was a very extremely cruel and barbaric person. Nobody could oppose him in Russia. Whoever went to oppose Stalin, such a person was killed. He was known as the man of steel. Khrushchev has written his diary. Khrushchev was Stalin's assistant and became the president of Russia after Stalin. Khrushchev writes that he has never seen a person as much a coward as Stalin in his life. When people read Khrushchev's diary, then they find it very strange. Until now they recognize Stalin as a man of steel, yet Stalin was a coward? Yes, Stalin never went out in public. He had a lot of fear that if he went out, that somebody would kill him. This is because he had killed thousands of people and thought, what if somebody kills me? He was the president of such a big country of United Russia called the USSR. In this Soviet Russia, wherever the president had to go and give speeches, inaugurations or ceremonies, 
then he would not go anywhere. He would just sit there inside the Kremlin. He kept two or three duplicates just like him. And wherever he needs to go somewhere, then Stalin would send those duplicates. His duplicate would go and cut the ribbon with scissors, and the photo of the duplicate would be printed in the newspapers. Stalin would just sit there in the Kremlin. He would not go anywhere. Stalin had a dog, and before eating the food in his plate, Stalin would give this food to the dog to eat in his plate. He would wait for half an hour to see that nothing is happening to the dog, and then he would eat from his own plate. This is because he was scared that somebody might mix poison in his food. We offer food to God and then eat, whereas Stalin offered food to a dog and then ate. He was such a soulful person, just think about this. In the later years of his life, Stalin stopped sleeping in the same room as his wife. He did not even have trust in his wife. He thought that, what if I go to sleep at night and my wife strangles my throat? This is because he had created so much enemies. He thought that, what if my enemy takes my wife and replaces her with a duplicate that kills me? He was this much of a sorrowful person. He was a coward. Therefore, a person of the mode of Rajas passion performs karmas of the mode of Rajas passion and plants the seed of his unhappiness there. And I spoke about it a lot of detail in the second chapter of the Gita, that the actions in which a wish for the fruits comes, and the actions in which attachment comes, pain certainly comes there. This is because until now, not a single person's actions have been completely successful and are never going to become completely successful. It is impossible that one will get the fruit in the exact same way that they wished. It is impossible that one will get the fruit in the same way that they wished. Durudan, Kansa were all figures in our scriptures and they were historical figures. They are people of the mode of Rajas passion and of the mode of Tamas, Donus. The mode of Rajas passion and Tamas, Donus prevailed in them. Think about the fact that they were Sri Krishna's contemporaries. They saw Sri Krishna, yet they fell into ignorance. There were so many figures who got pain such as Kamsa, Duridhan, Shishupal, Shakuni, Jarasan. There was also Ravan who was standing in front of Sri Ramchandaji. Ravan was of the mode of Rajas passion. He got only pain. And the fruit of the karmas of the mode of Tamas, dullness is ignorance. These are karmas performed outside the laws, rules or faith. A person may perform karmas that are outside the laws or outside the rules, where they do just what they like. Whenever one performs any karmas, then this, there is a system and rules according to which they should be performed. Karmas performed outside these laws, rules or faith, are karmas of the mode of tamas, dullness. The fruit of this is ignorance, delusion and stupidity. What is the psychological effect of the states of the three modes of nature? This is described in the next few verses.